1 John chapter 4, look what it says. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see if they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. You have permission. When it comes to doctrine, you can call it what you want. You can say that, Drew, you're being judgy. But here, what we're going to do today is try the spirits to see indeed if Chris Pratt is of God. Does he hold the Bible as the final and only authority of Jesus Christ, God Almighty? Let's take a look and see. Hey, Chris, hey Chris you watching? Um, I, I just, I don't know. I got butterflies in my stomach, but is there, could we make this happen? I don't know. But, you know, is there a possibility a guy like you and a guy like me could just be happy together, find some some semblance of happiness, just a partnership, so a friendship, friendship with benefits and no fucking museums, okay? That's all I ask, Chris Pine. <laughs> He's funny, isn't he? So here's your first clip. Chris Pratt making jokes about being homosexual uh, partners with Chris Pine. And of course, every good Christian man drops the F-bomb, because that's just normal, right? Oh, there goes Drew. <laughs> okay. Before our sex scene, I took two Pepto Bismol. During our sex scene, I felt your dick rubbing into me. <laughs> <laughs> Handshake. So vile is this exchange. Of course, this is Hollywood harlot Jennifer Lawrence, um, who also sold her soul. Shaking hands, off, extending her hand because Chris Pratt, this Christian man, just won a very vile insult contest as it appeared on a talk show over in England. That's normal though, right? Of course it is. Now, every good Christian man, and, and here he comes, <laughs> sneaking up behind because because Chris Pratt's funny, attending the Academy Awards, um, or I'm sorry, the uh, Critics' Choice Movie Awards, and uh, because, you know, these are normal Christian award shows. And I would argue, by the way, that whether it's the Critics' Choice Movie Awards, the Oscars, the MTV Movie Awards, he attends them all. Why is that important to know? Well, because they're worldly award shows. And actually, a better way to, to describe them, these are Satanists, right? These award shows are literally Satan's toilet where all the world's Satanists gather to get up on stage and hand out awards to each other because they're all narcissists, and he attends them all. Now, again, before you say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, it's because it's of the world. Well, so I don't understand what's wrong with that. Well, look, if you're a true Christian, you hold the Bible as the final authority of Jesus Christ, God Almighty. This is by where we measure everything. The final authority. This is the final word. The book of James 4. As of lately, you've heard a lot of this verse. You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Well, Drew, that's mean. Well, take it up with God. He wrote it. I didn't make this up, but this is a great measuring tool. Is it easy to spot somebody who claims to love Jesus Christ, but really they are one of the greatest friends of the world that you can imagine. In fact, when it comes to Chris Pratt, I don't know of another person who is more friends with the world than him. And if that's true, again, measuring by what scripture says, what does that make him? Not a enemy of God, literally described as the enemy of God. Now, for somebody who loves Jesus, meaning you, how would you like to be described as that? It's time for you to discern. Many of you have made Chris Pratt an idol. But as we continue measuring by what Scripture says here, can you determine and see if or if not he's an enemy of God? Let's keep going. The funny man at the MTV Movie Awards, right? Because that's just so normal narcissists attending movie awards by the way mtv 
arguably, if not the most satanic organization on the face of the earth, or at least in the top 10, responsible for decades of shredding anything left of God on this earth, at least trying to, morals and values destroyed by this organization, MTV. And here he is, right, attending ceremonies, award shows, and again, receiving awards from the world's most notorious Satanists. This is folly. This is confusion. Other award shows showing his great influence. Here are the Kids' Choice Awards. Why is this, I guess, important to talk about? Well, look at the reach, the influence that he has on the younger generation. So, in essence, by being a friend of the world, he's teaching even the youth, that yes, you can serve both Jesus Christ and be a friend of the world. This is what he's teaching. Whether you believe me or not, I'm showing you the proof. Many of the children or kids who maybe might want to start seeking Jesus Christ, well, they're going to learn it maybe their first time through a clown like this, showing them the wrong way to serve Jesus Christ. Yep, he pays lip service once in a while to Jesus, but in his actions, he shows you that, well, yes, you can live in the world and serve Jesus Christ. This is why the damage is being done. This is a doctrine that he's teaching. Now, you know you really haven't made it in the Christian world until you land a couple of commercials promoting alcohol consumption. There it is. Every good Christian man, that's a must-do, and that's just normal, right? Don't worry about promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ, actually get on shirtless, engulfed in narcissism, and promote beer drinking, beer alcohol consumption, because that's the thing to do. And there, no harm, no foul, right? right? Alcoholics out there, you know, who are just making the switch because they admire uh, Chris Pratt, he's now convinced them not to come to Jesus Christ, but to drink Michelob Ultra. This is folly. Got stuck out here. Would you eat me? Which part would you eat first? I'll probably just cut you open and sleep inside you if it got cold like Star Wars. I'd eat you. What part would you I'd eat? Do it. What would you eat first? On the count of three, say it. One, two, two three. three. <laughs> <laughs> you said <laughs> You're gonna need to eat. You're gonna eat a lot more than that. You're gonna need, you're gonna need more calories than that. See, and again, more raunchy humor. I mean, raunchy humor. How is this allowed? For those of you that disagree with me, I would argue you're not understanding the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no room for this in the gospel of Jesus Christ, where salvation is by far the single most precious thing in anybody's life. And he just laughs and carries on with the world in this raunchy humor. Again, keeping in mind friendship with the world, we know this man has no trouble appearing multiple times on Ellen DeGeneres. We talked about this in the Lauren Daigle video. Ellen DeGeneres, an absolute God-hating lesbian who lives her life the way she wants to, and in fact has actually turned down guests for their right views on Christianity and living in Christ, but allowing those who proclaim to love, uh, love Christ as long as they don't impede on her lesbian views. It's, it's amazing. And they have a great time. They get on there and they laugh. I love the title here, though. Chris Pratt and his son get VIP access at Disney. Wow, there's a shocker. Disney also the toilet of Satan, responsible for probably billions going to hell because of what they taught and what they shared with the world in the terms of magic and Satanism. No problem. He's not a he's not an opponent of Disney. What does that tell you? And again, adhering to what Scripture says, look, Chris Pratt has filed for divorce. In fact, he is divorced from Anna Faris, citing not adultery but irreconcilable differences. And again, not adhering to Holy Scripture, you cannot get divorced and remarried. He is currently engaged to be remarried. This is unscriptural. Even as he interviewed later on, he, he's really bummed out about it, and his church has helped him get through much of it, and everybody's just been supportive and loving. Never mind what it says in Holy Scripture. It's all about feelings and living in the world. 
which takes us to one of our final notations, his latest Twitter exchange with one Ellen Page. Let's take a look at that. It happened about a week ago. Ellen Page, who is a notorious Hollywood lesbian, um, called out Chris Pratt on Twitter. We're going to go to her tweet first. Let's look at what she said. She said, uh, if you are a famous actor and you belong to an organization that hates a certain group of people, don't be surprised if somebody simply, I'm sorry, someone simply wonders why it's not addressed. Being anti-LGBTQ is wrong, she says. There aren't two sides. The damage it causes is severe. Full stop. Sending love to all. Okay, great. Let's take a look at how Chris responded to that. All right, uh, we scrolled up a little bit. He said, it has recently been suggested that I belong to a church which hates a certain group of people and is infamously anti-LGBTQ. Watch this. He says, oh gosh, nothing could be further from the truth. The Guardians of the Galaxy star wrote on his Instagram. He goes on, he says, I go to a church that opens their doors to absolutely everyone. If you're, if you're not aware, what he's doing here is sidestepping. He's also having no intention of hurting anybody's feelings. In other words, he's not going to respond in the truth of Jesus Christ. Because the truth of Jesus Christ, and for that matter, Scripture cuts like a two-edged sword. It's meant to because it tells the truth. But he's going to do everything here to avoid that and hurt no one's feelings. In other words, he's towing the line. He's riding the fence. Right? He's not telling the truth. So he goes on, hold on a second. If you want to read more information, I'll certainly tell you about the church he's affiliated with, Zo Churches, uh, or Zo Church. And I did check out their website, and there is no statement of faith. They actually do not oppose homosexuality as far as their website goes. But either way, Chris Pratt blew it. He had a chance to answer Ellen with the truth and salvation, by the way, which is the only thing we're commissioned to do, but he didn't do it. He blew it. So I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to give an answer to Ellen. <clears throat> I'm not railing too hard on Ellen. I absolutely believe she's searching for the truth. But the way that Chris should have responded, and Ellen, if you're listening, this is your answer. What you say down here Right here, being anti-LGBTQ is wrong, you say. That's wrong. Being anti-Christ is wrong. And right now, you are taking a position of anti-Christ behavior. Lesbianism and homosexuality are abominations in the eyes of God. Citing Romans 1 and also in the book of Leviticus, I believe it's chapter 18. Homosexuality is a sin in the eyes of God. But here's the good news. Jesus Christ paid the price. You can receive his salvation today and renounce this sin. Come to him humbly. Kneel before him and say, you're the Lord. I repent of my sin and I will follow you the rest of my life on earth so that I can spend the rest of eternity with you and the glory of your father. That is salvation. And you can receive this absolutely free today. That, Chris, you potato, is what you should have told Ellen. Instead of saying, well, no, I just want everyone to love one another. Can we all just love? Just like John Lennon said, right? All you need is love, right? Wrong. There is no other name given under heaven by which we can be saved except by Jesus Christ. It's not about hating LGBTQ. It's not about being a famous actor. It's all folly until you come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. You cannot live this lifestyle and expect to live for eternity. So Ellen, you have a choice. Come to Jesus Christ and live for eternity in the glory of God Almighty or go to hell. That's your choice. I know it hurts to hear that, but I'll tell you what, as soon as you make that choice for Jesus Christ, he will take care of everything. Don't listen to what Chris the Fraud Pratt says, all right? 
There is a God who loves you and offers you salvation. As I told you at the beginning of the video, let's measure to see if this Chris Pratt is a man of God. I made a list. Let's take a look. Testing the spirits to see if they are sent from God. Chris Pratt doesn't defend Jesus Christ in truth, but rather he defended his church and he did not tell Ellen Page the truth. He works in Hollywood, gaining blockbuster status seemingly out of nowhere. He makes public D jokes, you know what that is, and videos seen by almost 29 million people just on that one video. He is allegedly a good Christian man getting paid to promote alcohol, question mark. A good Christian man divorced, question mark. Very public display of the raunchiest of humor. Foul language, no problem. Friendship with the world to include Ellen DeGeneres, a notorious Hollywood lesbian, as well as MTV, the Oscars, the People's Choice Awards, the Kids' Choice Awards, all the most famous satanic music and movie awards ceremonies on the face of the earth, receiving re awards from actual Satanists. Right? And finally, ask yourself this question. Does the world hate Chris Pratt? And Because I'm going to show you a scripture now. And I'm going to argue that the world does not hate Chris Pratt. What does that mean? Let's take a look. Jesus, who is so wonderful, tells us in John 15, if you scroll down, very interestingly enough, verse 18, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So the question is, does the world hate Chris Pratt? Clearly, no. The world adores Chris Pratt. So what is the conclusion? Well, the conclusion, for me at least, is he's teaching a false gospel, a false doctrine. He is not teaching the Jesus Christ of the Bible. He's teaching all of his followers the false lie that you can both live for god and the world you can behave and act however you want but if you've read the bible you know that this is not true so i'll leave you with that it is important for those of you who maybe are younger searching for the truth in jesus christ get yourself a king james bible search for god through scripture he left this for you Seek God with all your heart, soul, strength, and might, and mind through Scripture. Do not just listen to people like this. because They are going to steer you wrong. They are going to deceive you. They are going to get you into deception and delusion. And before you know it, you are serving a false god, just like this potato here. I do apologize. I did want to leave you with one more Scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Watch this. But it says, starting in verse 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. There are people specifically sent to deceive you in disguise. Again, they're not going to tell you that they're teaching you a false doctrine. They're going to disguise themselves and their doctrines because they're sent with the express intention of deceiving you. Let these verses soak in.